you think about bonding. Now an sp2 orbital will give rise to only two of the p orbitals being mixed, leaving one p orbital free. Now we can use this because we've only used one sp orbital here. Now if you had an sp2 orbital, that would actually leave, if I draw it in red, a p orbital that's free. And I'll draw it like that. Now they can bond together now, these p orbitals, because you've only got three orbitals that are hybridized and one, so if I put here, oops, let's put p, and if I did that for um, the sp, it would have two times p free, okay. Now sp2 is your typical uh, bonding for pi bonds, and this these interact with each other like that form a bond across, they share electrons, they share electrons, this orbital is the same as this one, so it looks like there's three lines there, but it's actually just two, and if we draw that structure, just scroll down a little bit, if we draw the structure of that with the p orbital, it's a bit, it is, I must admit, it's a bit confusing because it looks like that orbital's connected and that orbital's connected, but remember this is actually the same orbital, it's not four orbitals there, there's just two, so there's that one there and there's that one there, and it just happens to have that shape around carbon, that's all. So if you want to draw that, it will be C, single bond, C, so that's your sigma bond, but rather than doing that, we don't do that to represent that double bond, we put a double bond in like that. So that's where double bonds come from, it's p orbitals, the spur p orbital. So one of those lines uh, represents an sp3, sorry an sp2 orbital, and one represents a p orbital. So if I draw that in, that's, it doesn't matter which one because this is just that, a diagram. So sp2, and that one there, is a p orbital. That's a double bond, and that's called a pi bond pi bond, double bond. Now I hope you can see where I'm going with this. So that would be like ethylene or something like that. Now the next stage is to go to an sp orbital, so let's go scroll a little bit back up. An sp orbital, it's getting a bit uh, confusing this, I must admit. So if I just delete some of those lines, Now if we look at this and we go just to an sp, it should have two p orbitals, so let's try blue as a colour there for the other one. Now remember they were orthogonal, which is a that means 90 degrees to each other. So we draw that p orbital coming out and that, remember that's the same as that, that's the same thing. That one goes back there and that one goes back there. We've got one sigma bond. 1 p orbital spur with electrons in and another p orbital there and that then forms they're 90 degrees to each other that then forms a double bond over there as well so that leads to triple bonds so now we've got triple bonds it's carbon that's your single bond single sigma bond and then we draw what we draw rather than like I said before with a uh, double bond we don't draw all these curls everywhere we draw draw it like that as a triple bond so that's where triple bonds come from and so we can have this molecule here or acetylene is a good example of a triple bond and what actually is happening there is you've got one sigma bond going across and then you've got uh, one p orbital forming a pi bond and another pi bond to the side. So that's got two pi bonds. Okay, two pi bonds. And that's a triple, what's called a triple bond. Okay, so that's, that's how the shape of the orbitals can actually um, be simplified to give us what, what chemists draw as triple bonds, single bonds, and uh, double bonds. Now one thing 
I showed you at the beginning was the shape of the molecule is determined by these the shapes of these bonds and how they hybridize so if you um, if you have a tetrahedral shaped carbon that will be um, basically sp3 hybridized now if you look at a double bond let's just quickly go on to the double bond here if you have a double bond that's actually quite flat so that spur p orbital the shape of an sp2 carbon that's an sp2 carbon now sp2 because it's got plus p yeah so it's got sigma bond there sigma bond there sigma bond there and the spur um, pi bond so that's flat there's no three-dimensional structure to that now if you look at the triple bond so it's flat but it's got this like um, star shape if you will now if you look at the triple bond I did draw it up there but the triple bond it's not only flat because of the so that's sp plus 2 times p okay put that in brackets that's not confusing so we've got two p orbitals and then one sp so this is sp hybridized it's not only flat but it's linear as well it's straight so it doesn't have this shape it's straight so if you put different groups on there you'd have like a straight line there as well so the orbitals are actually determined the shape of the molecules and using a variety of techniques, NMR, uh, X-ray crystallography, or or things like that, you can actually see the shape of molecules as well, and it, and and use um, NMR or X-ray crystallography to to actually prove that these actually do exist like this. So that's that's structure and bonding. That's the chemical bonds mainly for organic chemistry I will put another tutorial together for um, other uh, chemical bonds so it's the valence electrons it's the um, what's called hybridization of the orbitals that determines um, the overall shape of the molecule and hopefully I've explained um, uh, how these bonds come by you've got sigma bonds that's a new one and pi bonds that's a new um, type of bond as well so hybridization of um, carbon atoms to give you different structures and that's covalent bonding in, for carbon species.